Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Thirsty Thursday. Um, we're very lucky to have Julius, uh, who's just joined us. I think Hello. he's in Spain, but I have no idea where he really is. Where are you actually? <laughs> well, you can see the flag close to my name. Yeah. Uh, it's, oh, uh, yeah. it's called the Little Red Dot, which is um, the island of Singapore. Okay. Yeah, well... Uh, in my blurry vision, it definitely looked like it could have been somewhere like Spain. Definitely. Um, it could be, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Less exciting when it's Singapore for, for us in Southeast Asia, but obviously good to have you. Um, Thank you. We have Gary and we have Georgina. Georgina has joined us spot on in terms of timing. Now, that, that is impressive. Uh, yeah. Now, um, we, 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 we are having show and tell to keep the primary teachers happy in the class, uh, which yes. is everybody except me, I think, actually. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, that, that, that's, that's the plan, show and tell. So what we were talking about is, is we're talking about kit and we're talking about software and, and just how you set up, because most of us have been doing this for a while now, and you're probably at the stage where you actually probably should be making yourself comfortable and doing things and i know i have changed quite a lot since i started this gig to make myself comfortable you know important uh, input devices and and things that you know really help help the day fly by without any real problems uh, you know uh very important to me um my um student asked me yesterday he said uh, you know uh, you really should ditch this MacBook and, and, and get a proper gaming laptop. And I said, funnily enough, that's right what I've got next to me because uh, the MacBook didn't have enough power uh, to deliver what I wanted. Um, and we're all discovering these little bits and pieces. Some of us are computer science teachers and funnily enough might have bits around the house. Some of us may have to order things from Lazada in Malaysia and Thailand. And uh, what is it in the Philippines? Uh, we also have Lazada and Shopee. You call it Shop Shopee. Oh, Shopee. Yeah, we, we have Shopee have and Shopee as well. too. Yes. Yeah. Um, Shopee seems to be more second-hand bits and pieces, but they've probably gone into electronics while I wasn't looking. What do you have in your place, Georgina? That is a very good question. I have no idea what's over here. <laughs> I moved here, and then a few months later, we're in shut down. So, yeah, no clue, actually, to be honest. Okay. Well, somebody somewhere is delivering it. And when all else fails, yeah. you can look at Amazon if you're prepared to pay the extra postage. <laughs> <laughs> It's interesting because our budget team, once we create the budget, and if we want to add like any device, any software, any applications, oh, yeah. or like any 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 product, as long as it has a Lazada link, they will get it immediately. If it has something like Amazon or uh, I don't know, you call it any other postal service, they won't get it. They know yeah. Lazada mm -hmm. is local, and then they will trust you, and immediately they'll do the shopping. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think I think that's the thing is is that Lazada has done a great job in being local yet getting some stuff from China or whatever, but they've managed to sort that problem with delivery. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, true. You know, I think I is think that, is that is that Ali AliExpress AliPay still? Ali, it exists. Um, still exists. Um, yeah, but I'm not sure what it, it's connected to. Mm -hmm. Everybody's using Lazada in, yeah, in Malaysia. True. In Shopping, Southeast though, Asia, Shopping's getting used. Shopee's getting used a lot, though, but I thought that was more for second-hand stuff, to be honest. But maybe in the Philippines, they've got more new stuff. For the second-hand in Shopee. Singapore, we have Carousel, so that's the third one. Shopee oh, is like, it's yeah, like yeah, Lazada, yeah. basically. Yeah, you have basically, that one. Everything you've got in Singapore, we've got in Malaysia, because I think it comes in and out anyway. And probably in the Philippines, too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so think, uh, those, those are three things that are probably nowhere in your country whatsoever, but just, just, just for you to know. You're right, yeah. <laughs> no, to be honest, though, like I was thinking like secondhand and what about when I was living in Egypt? I know that a lot of people do sharing of things like that on Facebook. So they have these Facebook groups and they just, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, they do it that way. So um, I'm sure if I asked my husband, he'd tell me of a few places that I, I haven't used. But yeah, I'm sure that it exists here and I just haven't, uh, I haven't yeah. reached it yet. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we have. I mean, the reason we bring it up in the show and tell is because we have had to order a few things from uh, Lazada to to keep us going in terms of our internet and bits and bobs and all that kind of stuff. Um, and you know, Gary has just been talking about one of the things he's thinking about is buying cable. And we were giving some good advice on that because it's one of the things you can mail order uh, if you've got bad Ethernet, and it's a lot cheaper, it turns out, than buying. Things. <laughs> However, if you are the kind of person who doesn't like cables, 
this will be your unholy nightmare. Because we've discovered from Lazada, you can order 30 meters of cable for about, uh, we, we reckon 10 UK pounds, which is probably 10 US dollars these days, 10, 12 US dollars. And um, we were like, you know what, that'll sort you out, Gary, problem solved. Uh, and then he was telling us, well, he hasn't got an ethernet cable. And then I said, well, you can then buy one of these things uh, and you can have an ethernet cable too. Uh, and then you can go completely uh, wired. <laughs> You know, it's such a it's such an interesting topic, though, because, you know, as myself, not coming from a computing or engineering background, it's not these are not things that I would normally yeah. think of. But now that I'm married to a machine learning engineer, it's interesting because I'm always watching him pull apart his hard drive and put things together and put the wiring up around the door to get into the bedroom. So you guys are right. These things are really yeah. important. And if people do want to save money to do like yeah. their own, you know, do it yourself DIY uh, situation for their hardware, it will save them a lot of money. So it is a fair yeah. topic. Yeah, and I think um, I think the thing is that you can do it very DIY and just roll the cable out into your, into your router, or you can actually do a nice job and put it around the walls and things and, and do, do things like that um, if you're not particularly renting or anything. But it, it, it will solve a lot of your Wi-Fi issues. I mean, um, I managed to download 100 gigs worth of uh, PlayStation uh, game in uh, a good deal less than my wife was impressed by because the server was local. Um, and I got that downloaded, I think, an hour maybe, something like that. Wow. It was ready to run in 10 minutes. And uh, Minchi was like, how come you can download 100 gigs worth of data? Well, partly because it was on the server, clearly, at the ISP, but also because obviously priorities are, are correct. They, you must plug your PlayStation in because otherwise you'll have to suffer with the Wi-Fi. It's a very important advice for teachers, obviously. Very. <laughs> It's a true. It's a fair point. Every time I ask, like, what about the internet signal? He's like, just go stand closer, you know, in the living room where everything's connected, um, mm. because we are in the middle of rewiring everything into our office, yeah. and we have a little Wi-Fi, um, you know, the box that's sitting here. But you're right; mm. it's not always strong enough for the big things. So, like, when I'm running two or three Google Meet video conferences at the same time, it struggles, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, the, the, there are various issues, and. Look, I don't, I don't want to be wrong about this because I've got very good internet, touch wood, because somebody up the road from me didn't have good internet the other day, and I'm like, you better not cut my connection. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I think, you know, just doing the basics, and one of the basics is cutting on the Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi is going through air, and you can imagine how much more difficult that is for a computer than a cable which is sealed in. You know, so it's all good fun. It's true. And it's not just about the download either. Like, for example, if I'm running um, a video edit on Adobe Rush and I'm using the Adobe mm. Creative Cloud, I'm trying to sync and upload my edits to the cloud. So it's not just download as well. It's both ways. Yeah. Now, ironically, my upload is faster than my download. I don't know why, but it is. Um, so it, it is. An, I mean, if you're on fiber optic, it, sometimes your uploads are faster than your downloads just because of the sharing around the system, building, I guess. So we get a lot of that going on. Um, do, you, do, you, do you reckon this one will be anything like a term from the past, download and upload? Because I, I, I was just thinking, at least this year and half of the last year, I've done everything in cloud. Like, I haven't downloaded anything. So in terms of, like, movie editing, I'm using Wii Video, which is cloud-based. Photos, mm. I'm using Pixlr. Everything mm. on Google Drive, everything online, mm. basically. So even right now when I, um, okay, the only thing what I downloaded was the new Catalina, the new OS on mm. Mac. Mm. And I, I had to delete nothing to just re uh, replace the, the operating system because mm. everything was up in the cloud. Oh, so easy for uh, me. Yeah, I mean, I, I upload videos very regularly. So that's right, probably yeah. the biggest upload I do. Uh, if you create that, it, that, not too much, to be honest, yeah. I think it really depends on what you're doing, right? Like, again, um, like for, for my husband, he's running all his AI stuff on server, so he doesn't use local very much at all, mm. although that's completely different because then he needs his own servers to run all the data, right? Um, Correct, for my, yes. Yeah, <laughs> so that's a whole other story. Um, but for myself, like, I use... Okay. Um, <laughs> what was it? 
Go ahead, Gary. Gary. Uh, so did you did you say something, Gary? Uh, I, what is a decent download and upload speed? Because I just I'm just uh, I just tested my speed now and uh, it's don't test while we're on the call, yeah. <laughs> It's, I'm testing it because you? you're breaking out. I don't know if if it's uh, if it's my computer or my connection or what. Because I we have can, a 2.83 MVP. We can all run it. And yes, we can all run a test now, and we can tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that'll kill the conversation. We didn't really want any viewers. Anyway. Sorry, viewers. Um, yeah, that, 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 that's not the greatest way. Uh, we've lost viewers, I think, already over that. Um, but yeah, I, I know the thing. Um, please um, do c chime in on the comments as, as to what setups you've got and what help you need. You do have lots of help uh, in general speaking. In, turn, in, in terms of important things, also how do you manage your pets while you're uh, on the computer? <laughs> Eat everything. I just casually continued like, oh, no one's gonna see that. <laughs> Yeah, nobody notices your cat up here. Look, look, it's a major off. highlight in my form time. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, I there was a... Sorry, carry on. No, it's okay. Just say that I have this quite long table, and the cats just like to jump, and sometimes they'll sit next to me while I'm on the computer. But, of course, they don't know if I'm on live stream and broadcasting, right? So it's just like, oh, let's hop on today, and yeah. Yeah, my point was, did you see the, there was a, a viral, a movie that went viral this week with that lady from the Philippines? And then she was wow. having an interview and there were like two cats in the background. They were like <laughs> literally farting and jumping all over. And she was like so relaxed, but everybody was just like <laughs> looking at the cats. It's in panic. <laughs> it's like really, the video. Really funny. Well, if, if I can find the link, I'll share it with you. It's like yeah. really, really hilarious. Yeah, very funny. I mean... Um... I think most people have got to the stage now that they, they've got whatever devices they've got. But the thing is, if you're in lockdown, it doesn't mean you can't order the basics. If you don't, if your sound quality is terrible, order some kind of microphone come thing or lapel mic. They're cheap, cheap, and they're much more effective than more expensive systems in a lot of cases. Um, so the, there are things you can do for very little money that will make your experience much more enjoyable. Yeah. So, you know, that, I think that's the key thing. Um, yeah. I, I want to say I had, um, I've been teaching class and I had a pretty fancy microphone mm -hmm. connected. Um, and I, I didn't have a fancy microphone stand. It's like stacked on top of books, on top of a Kleenex mm -hmm. box or something. But it was, a, it was the wrong kind of microphone. I can't remember dynamic or cardioid, whichever yeah. one like collects more sound uh, instead of, um, yeah, dampening yeah. the extra sound. And I, I figured out that actually just by simply unplugging it, my Mac had much better audio oh. than than the fancy mic. I mean, you can do like like equipment is built exactly for this for for, yeah. for grabbing the relevant sound and excluding the irrelevant sound. Yeah, no, I agree. I have to say that my um, Mac mic is better, and I've stopped using anything else because. Nothing else seems to match it. Even even my quite decent podcasting mic, um, yeah. as you say, it's designed for this purpose. But if if you have got a lot of background sound, because if you have a three and a half mil jack or something, lapel mics are great, mm -hmm. uh, headset mics are great. But if you've got that background fuzzing sound, you need to get USB ones. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's the key thing. The three and a half mil jacks uh, and anything slightly older you'll start to get that nasty buzzing sound. Uh, yeah, and I've noticed that on... That's so that's the solution, the right? The USB mics. Because we, 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 yeah. um, we have a box of these mics at school. I mean, we have the whole set, the headset. Yeah. And then we had them with the USB. And the students keep on coming and getting the USB ones. But I never, yeah. I mean, I never realized why. I think it was just much easier for them to use. Yeah. But now, as, no. you, as you said, it's, it's basically cutting the, the noise. And the reason is is because inside the computer, and this is a bit of a computer science lesson here, the wire inside is really not properly shielded. And that's why you end up with that nasty noise. Correct, um, yes. And that's why you need to do USB because it's digital all the way. 
Okay, I'm going to ask you a science question. So shielded in what way and what causes the interference or what causes the problem? Good point. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and the interference is probably most likely to come from um, the electricity itself, uh, from various power points, the fan, and even potentially the CPU. So mm -hmm. all of these things could cause uh, interference and, and that kind of, uh, well, it's not sound exactly, but it is interference and leakage. Yeah, it results in sound. Yeah, it, it's not. It's, it's not properly shielded, gotcha. um, which is why also I told him by his Ethernet cables get at least Cat six. Mm -hmm. I'll do that. But I yeah. like the sound of Eric. So <laughs> yeah. I, I, okay. I'm so curious, what kind of microphone or what is that? What kind of microphone okay. do you use? So I've got an ATR USB microphone. Um, so I've had a couple of USB microphones, but this one, I need to look it up now. It's it's either a dynamic or cardioid. Cardioid, I think uh, dynamic is the one. Mm. Dynamic, basically, it it like um, excludes irrelevant sound and only grabs the um, the what you really want to hear, which is what's directed directly to it. And um, it's it wasn't that expensive as things go. I mean, you know. Uh, you don't want to. You don't want to ask people to spend a lot of money, but here's the thing. So for um, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about my setup, which okay, you know is not is not the standard super basic setup, but I've got a I'm, I'm sitting on a couch. I've got a couple of um, uh, arms. Like what do they what do they call these things? They're like um, the swing swing arm things like you put a swing arm lamp on mm -hmm. and they're clamped to a nearby table and so i'm sitting on my couch i can watch tv but if it's time to get online then i swing these two arms over one of them has a ring light which is why my face is you know lit here i mm. i'm gonna adjust it a little mm. bit um I, i've got it lowered because see so i can um hold on yeah, so I can go super bright, which is obviously uh -huh. too much, or I can go down so it doesn't, uh, you know, um, keep keep me from being able to see. But um, so one's got the light, but in the middle of the ring light has got my camera. So my computer's in another part of the room. Swing the camera and the light over. Swing the mic over, and I'm ready to go without leaving the couch. So it's kind of, it's kind of fancy. Didn't cost that much. It's like under two hundred bucks uh, for the whole setup, I think. And and um, but you know you don't really want to ask everybody to do that, but it's pretty convenient. So. Well, the thing is, if if you are somebody who's streaming a lot and YouTubing and things like exactly. that, and I think it's yeah. fair. But if we're talking yeah. about regular teachers, we we're not asking you to spend that. No, your of course not. The money could be to. very very tight. And what Absolutely. we're trying to do here is suggest as many cheap workarounds as possible. Um, right. Some your school might be prepared to pay for out of budget if it's, you know, the 15, 20, 30 bucks edition. And mm -hmm. uh, some you might be happy to spend a little bit of money if, if, it, if it makes a difference. Of course. Um, yeah. For your classes. You know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. right. Yes. Uh, I knew Adam was going to chip in the Blue Yeti. That's I true. How That's long? Do we, I, 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 you know what? I should have run a sweepstake. How long would it take? <laughs> oh, somebody mentioned the blue yay. <laughs> yeah, God. absolute god of this. I really I, considered I that, that Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it is, it, it is, it is the the podcasting, um, YouTube standard. King. Absolutely, yep. Uh, yep. and the only reason I didn't have a blue yeti in particular is because I wanted the portability to host actual podcasts away from my computer occasionally. Um, and, yeah. I do have the slightly cheaper one around somewhere. The Here's the thing. Older. Yeah. And there's so much these days that, I mean, the, the standard of audio in, in, in general equipment has gone up so much that of course the, the blue Yeti is the Cadillac and, and I considered mm. the blue blue Yeti. Gosh, I can't say it. Okay. So, but I mean, uh -huh. your standard microphones these days, your lapel mics, there's some really affordable lapel mics that can do really good audio that's close mm. enough that it's not going to make a huge difference in terms of actual performance in a real class situation. Yeah. And as I say, but if, if you're going to do some YouTubing and you're going to get into it, yeah, the Blue Yeti is the recommendation 
everywhere. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, yeah. And I think Adam is is wise to bring it up. So if you're not planning, if, if you're planning to do this a little bit longer term and you've got the bug for uh, producing these things, then your Blue Yeti is, is awesome. Uh, and great for interviews too. Uh, you can have two or three people around the mic, uh, which is great. Um, your lapel mic is, is probably your first step, I would say. Um, it's not going to beat a brand new laptop probably, but if you've got a two, three year old laptop or something like that, then a USB lapel mic should be your first step towards things. And just to let you know, uh, we'll just do a quick round. I am just using my standard MacBook mic. Does it sound okay? That's great. Perfect. Yeah. Harry, what are you using? I am, what, what using, am I using? Uh, Gary. Oh, I'm using a, uh, I think there's a delay because of my internet connection. Mm -hmm. So you will hear me answering five seconds delay. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, because I, I can see my screen is freezing. I am mm -hmm. using a basic Mac Air. And then I just okay. have a, uh, what do you call this, an, uh, an earphone. But yeah. with my glass, I usually have um, a webcam, uh, a Logitech webcam where I put it on a tripod and then to monitor them I use an iPad and sometimes I use I this is my extended monitor the mm -hmm. TV at home mm. uh, I mean the Logitech uh, Logitechs are really good yeah. in terms of but if, you don't, if you have a desktop machine and you don't have a decent webcam built in then Logitech is Logitech. definitely yeah, Logitech. Sorry, <laughs> Logitech. Yeah. Um, so the Logitech is 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 probably the the number one uh, brand for that kind of thing. And then again, they're not terribly expensive. I think they're about fifty US dollars, right? So yeah, I don't know because right. the, I this one I got this for free. Mm. Wait, that's yep. that's that's my camera. Okay. Oh, really? <laughs> I got this for free because I participated in the Google Edu on Air. So they sent mm. me uh, a camera, an external camera, this one, and uh, a lapel microphone, one piece earbud. That's it. And the book. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. I mean, as yeah. I say, some of those webcams these days go all the way up to 4K, but you would only ever need 1080 um, for mm -hmm. this kind of thing, broadcasting. So yeah, I think that's, that's a good good hint. Right, excellent. Julius, what's your setup? Normal laptop connected with uh, to a uh, Google Home. I just got, uh, I'm just like uh, like a kid in a candy shop right now with this. <laughs> I, know, I love uh, that. I love that. Hey, Google, what's the temperature in Singapore? Okay, it doesn't hear me. Hey, Google, mm. what time is it right now? It's 9.23 p.m. Okay, did you hear that? Yep, yep. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah, that's the only problem because I, I activated I activated the microphone, it's connected on the Bluetooth. Not right mm -hmm. now, because I'm using this one when I do okay. like interviews and stuff. But again, I don't have the microphone on it on um, on Google Home. So only sound from the laptop. So I'm oh, casting, okay. I can cast like Google Chrome or I can cast the, the whole one with a, mm -hmm. with a little here on Mac with a little Bluetooth. But yeah. unfortunately, I cannot record my voice and transfer my voice through the Google Home. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I and mean, I think there are that, some limits with those speakers, right? And I'm, I'm using this pair of, uh, what's that, Bose. Uh, oh, uh, very nice. Ooh. Yeah, it's not very good. Yeah. It's not like, um, um, what do you call them? The quality, the... Um, Noise yeah. yeah, comfy, something like that. The noise, yeah. oh, noise the, canceling, no? noise canceling, thirty five yeah, yeah. or something like that. Yeah, they're, cool. they're like, yes, I cannot take them off right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're, so good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> they're so good. Yes, cool. Georgina? Okay. Uh, so I am using. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. Ooh, that so, looks that's cool. So familiar. What is that? Oh, is God, that? I think that is, that's Wonder Woman, but oh. Wonder Woman, yeah, and then she it's AirPods Pro, so oh. that's what I'm doing. Whoa. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Uh, paid the extra like 
you know, $5 or whatever it was to get the cool Wonder Woman case to go with it. So I was pretty excited. But yeah, the pros, they're shorter than the wow. other ones. And the I think the sound's pretty great. good. Of course. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So, How cool. long? so we've seen the complete variety uh, of, uh, of systems from what's, in my case, basically built in into the laptop. Yeah. Very nice microphones um, and um, absolute wireless, which is, is good. Um, yeah. And I think all of, all of our systems are working. I think the sound quality has been great on all of them. So totally. it shows that this kind of thing, you don't have to spend out a lot. Um, but as I say, if you're not getting the real experience, then it's a really good idea probably to invest in a lapel mic. Uh, if you want nice headphones and, and you want that kind of experience, then uh, by all means, treat yourself. <laughs> yeah, but obviously, as you say, you can get by without it. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it would be interesting to mention too, like the other impacts of sound since we're on the topic. I don't know if there's time, James, since you're hosting today, oh. but um, my, you know, we were talking about that with my husband the other day about the acoustics in the room. And so sometimes mm -hmm. like when I'm not on my AirPods and I'm using the laptop sound, um, mm -hmm. there's quite a lot of echo because there's, n there's mm -hmm. bouncing, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And if there's no carpet on the floor. So I don't know if you guys have experienced that too, but might be interesting to mention. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why I like the sound of Eric. <laughs> yes, it's, yeah. It's, it's really well, that's, good. Yeah. yeah, that's because this microphone kind of handles that. But like Sethi, if you look at his videos, you can see that yeah. he has some actual sound absorbing panels on the wall. And just yeah. like two or three of those make a huge difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It looks um, like a design, but it has a purpose. Yeah. When yeah, I'm recording cool. for YouTube and, and it's not particularly video or anything, I literally record on the bed. Because that absorbs quite a lot the, the duvet exactly yeah. absorbs a lot of the sound, and uh, I know some people go further and actually hide in their wardrobe when they're recording totally. sound, seriously, because it yeah. completely gets rid of that echo. Yeah, uh, and we amazing. laugh, but there are plenty of people doing podcasts in that way because of yeah. course you can't see them. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it's a like, like right? throw the cover over your head on the bed. Yeah, like, yeah. like, like say it under a comforter. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, and as I say, those things you 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 may be joking about it, but it does make a huge difference and gets rid of Absolutely. a lot of echo. Um, yeah. Oh, we've been these looking little... at house to find places not too echoey. Yeah, yeah. and these DIY 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 DIYs uh, make a huge difference. So, like, I mm. have these little lights that I can pull not to blind mm. anybody over mm. on the wall. And mm. then I was watching like an Adobe, they hosted like a photo sh of selfie, believe it mm. or not, as it was really cool how to take a really good selfie. Mm -hmm. And they were showing like you could use like, you know, they have those silver trays for teas and you could mm. put that under you to reflect yeah. the light more. Oh, so right, if you're yeah. Like, mm. yeah, there's all kinds of cool do it yourself um, hacks mm. to help you with lighting and sound while you're on the mm. shows. So yeah. I'm one of the challenges I always find for lighting, which is why I'm not beautifully lit potentially, is that I can't stand lights going straight into my eyes. Yeah. Um, so my lighting is actually directional, but it's off to the right and it's not pointing directly at me. Mm. But it seems it's it's good enough for my Mac. It seems it seems to be okay. Sure. You know, yeah, I have but, to say, James, because I remember you mentioned that when I talked about the ring light. I mean, yeah. there, you, there are a lot of lights that have you know settings that are low enough that mm. you'd probably be able to handle them, but they'd still help. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Was just, I was just thinking that as a teacher, I mean, you've got the spectrum of students mm. um, who are like fully lit and who are like, you know, uh, backlit mm. and just a shadow and you can't even tell if it's a real person. Mm. And if you as a teacher are at least reasonably well lit, then you, mm. you're you kind of more in a position to ask your students, hey, you know, we have so little mm. connection, you know, in a way, mm. I, what we can see is like, the tiniest thread of what we have to connect to each other. And, and I'd like yeah. to be able to see you clearly. And so I feel yeah. like that you can, I, I, I can ask the kid to turn a lamp on, you know, I also think the other thing is that, um, natural light is your best friend if you do it right. Um, yeah. so, um, Gary seen me during the day and, uh, I didn't melt into nothingness. <laughs> uh, I wasn't a vampire and, and I was actually naturally lit and, and, and it looked, you know, much better probably. Uh, Gary, um, I don't need any uh, comment at this point, but it looked all right, didn't I, when I was talking to the Philippines? Yes, yes. No, no it's it's totally fine. I just recall that it's these are some basic lessons in photography: the 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 lighting, the natural mm -hmm. light. And if you need more lights, 
I I have a whiteboard where I I use this one. Uh, can you see my whiteboard? Because I don't see it in my screen. I have a oh, whiteboard. Okay, now uh, I don't know what's wrong with my connection. But I use this to write things down because I'm not really good mm -hmm. with with uh, equations. So one of my suggestions for for math teachers and for science teachers, they can have it on a whiteboard with a pencil, a whiteboard marker, and then the camera mm -hmm. on top. And then the basic lighting technique is to make use of this to make yourself well lit right so mm -hmm. i i it's not seen in the camera but if i remove this i have, will have a darker face on the other side but mm -hmm. if i put it here again it's better right so yeah. basic uh it's you don't see it but it's here actually mm -hmm. so it's putting more light on the on my darker side so mm -hmm. basic That's basic true. lessons yeah now we have to consider all these things because we have to be to look you know this in in front of our students online <laughs> <laughs> there's that yeah and it's like we, we we we've probably chosen the moment in that we've got the worst lighting as well so we do have to think about that a little bit more um the other the other thing i was going to say too like i don't know if you can see from the lighting on my face but like it depends to what if your screen's like behind you and it's large or not but you could use the tabs in your in your windows like on your screen to shed light as well so like if i do this and i go to a darker screen i lose some light but if i put on mm -hmm. like a white screen like google mm -hmm. then it adds more light so you could use yeah, your right. screen behind you as well to help you without actually getting anything um extra yeah. so there's lots of different ideas i think it's cool to experiment and see what works um best yeah yeah and as i say it it it, it, it helps if you can look semi-human it's it's a big advantage <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so um, next I want, I want to kind of move on to organization and uh, we're going to do another round hole because I say it is show and tell today and I'm just going to tell you how I organize my day in, in distance learning. Um, it is not the most complicated system. I have a simple Google Sheet. I have mm -hmm. all the links that I'm going to do that day, all of the, the classroom links and all the resources I'm going to do. And I just go through my day and, and, and follow it through. That works for me. Uh, I've shared it with people. Nobody else uses it. <laughs> I'm on my own. <laughs> but it works for me, right? Because I, I like the flexibility. I like to be able to have my columns. I like things organized. I like to have a little drop down box that tells me I've done and planned and stuff like that. And I like mm -hmm. to have tabs. I have a tab per week. And it, work, it works really well for me. But yeah, I know everybody else has got other great plans. So, Let's uh, see how everybody else does their teaching. Now, in no particular order, but I'll start with Julius. <laughs> you see what's in my back? Uh, yeah, I, I had a feeling you were going to go with that. I huh? love them. I love them. All my students are using sticky notes, Padlet, real mm. Padlet, right? The most important tasks, everything what I find out, look, a ring light, I just wrote it down. That's mm. the next feature. Thank you, Adriana. I just saw your message as well. Uh, for like quick tasks, tasks I use this um, the sticky notes. Um, as we're in Office 365 and we work on Teams, I'm, us I'm using one app called Planner uh, okay. because I'm using with my colleague. So we're like two edtech coaches at the school for the secondary school, right. and every single uh, task or like every single job, we just like create in Planner. This one will yeah. give you like a very nice uh, BI and then uh, analytics and you know, like uh, representations and stuff. But the mm -hmm. most important is that we track them. So I can see okay. the task my colleague is on and she mm -hmm. can see the task I'm on as well. Okay. As you, that's the easiest way. It's called Planner. So it's part of the Microsoft Office 365. Okay, okay that's good. Yeah. Um, right, next, Gary. Um, I use a Google Calendar in my Google Calendar or all the links are there, the links for my slide deck the link for well for google meet mm -hmm. all my documents if i am using a document for my script mm -hmm. so everything is in google in my google calendar so i don't i just have to click them mm -hmm. so instead of looking for it in google drive it's all there so it's easier for me to use google calendar so yeah. I'm, I'm also reminded when oops 30 minutes before time you have to be there <laughs> so yeah. google calendar. yeah i mean i, I use google calendar too um, and I actually literally use the alarm function in my phone a lot. Um, yeah. 
because a lot of people don't realize that this is just the, the super basic uh, function on your Android. But not only can you put stuff in here, but you can also put messages. Um, yeah. Somebody got the shock of their life was that when I said, oh, I, I need to make sure I don't forget something. I said, why not set an alarm? And they said, well, how can I put a message in? I said, well, don't just put the word alarm. Yeah, right. <laughs> or whatever Tidal. the message is. And, yeah. and that, that really it's works. Right. Right. And, it, you know, you can repeat it daily or whatever you want to any day of the week. Right. And I just use that throughout the day just to remind me like 10 minutes before. Um, it's really unsubtle, but it, it works well. And then obviously for other people's stuff, I've got Google Calendar. Um, but for my day-to-day -day organization, I'm definitely on Sheets. Right, next, Georgina. Uh, I'm a mostly like Gary, love Gary. Uh, so using Google Calendar, yeah, to arrange uh, meetings and all my CPL sessions, um, et cetera. But for my Google Classroom lessons, um, I like to post all of my lessons ahead of time. So they're scheduled in advance um, because the um, Meet link is now integrated through Google Classroom. So I don't need to host any of that through Google Calendar. So I just list a slot in the Google Calendar that I have this lesson with the class code in. And then I go into my Google Classroom and um, set up for teaching. So all of my resources for the actual lessons are posted through the Google Classroom ahead. Mm -hmm. And um, the calendar is mostly just for like my meetings for the other roles that I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. And you, Eric? But before oh. Eric starts, mm -hmm. I want to say sticky notes. Julius, just this morning, I was saying to myself, because I was starting to feel like, oh, I've got a lot of things and I need to be notified of my priorities. I was just thinking this morning, I got to go get a sticky notepad and yeah. put it on my wall. <laughs> yep. Yes. <laughs> Well, so um, my school, I feel like we, in a way, we sort of reinvented the wheel. We um, we had we created a spreadsheet. The science teacher and I, like I was, I was a thinker, but he was a coder on this yeah. one, and and another teacher as well, um, made something where a student can go to this spreadsheet and it automatically creates a copy, and mm -hmm. um, it only shows them what they take that week. So by oh right, yeah. Yeah, so by 8 a.m. on Monday morning, then every teacher should have entered in the plans that they have for their classes that week right. for that stu for each student, for each of their classes, and then the student can see only what they do. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I have to do that for my students, and then I use that as my guideline as well for the classes. I've mm -hmm. got a, um, a sheet where I, that I have linked that I look at too often. You'd think I'd know my schedule by now, but it has changed, you know, a lot since mm. we moved to a distance learning yeah. um, schedule. And so I look at that a lot and I get in trouble because it's not live. So uh, I, I go back to calendar and, and um, use that. But yeah, I have to say I'm, despite what I put on the sheet, I'm, I'm adjusting, of course, as mm. I go along, depending on how the class is, but mm. I'm, I'm using sheets, calendar, and classroom, yeah, pretty standard in a way. Yeah, I have to say Google Classroom is, is a godsend. Um, of course, yeah. And we just had uh, Google Meet advanced features. Yeah, you can do a lot of planning with Google Meet. Um, yeah. I also like the fact that Google Meet these days, you can just switch it on for your, within Classroom, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And when they get around to doing the breakout rooms, I'm willing to come back. Um, that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's the key feature. Mm -hmm. Guys, you can totally arrange your own breakout session. So I'm just organized one for my next CPL next week. So we mm -hmm. use like a hyperdoc and we just yeah. embed the different meet links in the hyperdoc and then staff can pick and choose which session they want to go to for training. Oh, okay. Okay. It makes so sense. So you can have some, uh, multiple Google Meets at once. I was going to ask. Yeah. So you really can. You can, you can, yeah. So that's exactly the thing. I so, wasn't sure. Yeah, just to clarify, sorry if I wasn't clear, I was all excited mm. about it, but maybe yeah. just to clarify. So for staff, right, because they're not bound by the classroom integration of Google mm -hmm. Meet, so you can pre-set up the Google Meet links that you want for your staff to go and mm -hmm. do breakout sessions. Mm -hmm. For the students, if you would like them to just use the nicknamed sessions that are integrated already inside the classroom, mm -hmm. that would be a little difficult, right? You'd end up okay. having to meet them also to other Meets. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not like as secure as the integrated link that's set up through classroom, but it is possible. It just means 
that you would um, then rename the link after. But I would be careful with that. I would say that the feature is really awesome for like staff training. So we're mm -hmm. really excited about that. And then the other functionality you can use as well that really helps um, that we've set as a a routine to help that with staff is having mm -hmm. them go in at the end of each lesson and reset the integrated nicknamed meet link inside the Google Classroom. Mm. So that means the mm. students can't get in again and reuse it. Okay, so that's the closest meet can get to a breakout room. And uh, yeah, Adam has pointed out that, yeah, that's that's probably what, um, it is one of the key features that has sold a lot of teachers on Zoom, is that Seriously. you can either break out randomly or you can choose which kids go where. And, and that has meant a lot more classroom discussion. Um, so that's the reason I'm sticking to Zoom for now. Although mm. the tab feature, Google Meet is catching up, and I hear using the tab feature, video is actually all right, whereas Zoom, yeah. don't do it. <laughs> um, yeah, just uh, give them the link to the YouTube. It, it's not even worth it. Because um, I, I have not once seen in Zoom a decent video play. Has anybody? I'm no, but we use well. Meet. A, we use Meet a lot for, and we use the Chrome tab to share the the audio yeah. and the video, and it's really smooth in Meet. Really smooth. Yeah, I think that's because it is fully integrated. And as I say, since the tabs come to Meet, I've been told that video is quite smooth now. Nicely, there is another one that Meet together, which is quite nice. That's a little different though, um, but that that's quite fun because the teacher can control it. Um, so that that's quite a nice one um, because you can get, hang on, I don't know how to spell it right. To be fair to you, James, it is like what almost midnight where you are. Nope. Uh, yeah, it's dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so You're moving on to the next bit. On. Okay, so um, we've had a bit of a discussion about uh, videos and, and what systems we're using. I think most of us are using Google Meet, Zoom. Is anybody else using anything else? Uh, Teams? Teams, yes. Yeah, Office 365. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Office 365 School. So Teams is the main channel for integrating all the plethora of the Office mm -hmm. Suite, Office 365 applications. And um, they, have, um, they have done um, uh, many new updates. Mm -hmm. So previously, they've been criticized that they only have like four. You can only see four people at the same time. Mm -hmm. But now they created like a lobby, so you can invite them to the lobby, and from the lobby you can bring them to the to the mm -hmm. um, to the conference. You have mm -hmm. analytics; they provide you at the end of the meeting. You can end the meeting. I think previously Teams was uh, meant was designed as a uh, a business product when everybody mm -hmm. has the same uh, rights and mm. um, responsibilities as well. But in a class, it's mm. different because students can be cheeky and they can kick you out of the meeting and then you struggle a bit. So we went through a bit of a um, re-education in this purpose. So we kind mm. of like enforce this one to, to students that you need to disable your camera, you need to disable your microphone. Before you had that raise hand feature, you had to ask a question and then we had to go through this. In classes with like 25 students, it's mm. so difficult to control them. But I think with the latest updates, Tim does a, a very good um, a very good job. And again, um, you can, you just have like a toggle button Then, if you want to share your screen, you can share your YouTube or the videos and you can include sound, you can include the video, you can have yourself there as well. So. Mm. I think, and also the latest one this week I just discovered, they have an integration with Zoom. So um, clicking okay. on, on the uh, three dots on the ellipses, you can connect to your Zoom as well. So <laughs> what our students do, uh, sorry, what our teachers do is when they have the PSAG class, when they have the HR, mm -hmm. the homeroom class, they want to see them all and they want to give them an opportunity for all students to see each other and bring your pet or like carnival or dress mm -hmm. differently or candy picture and stuff. And they use Zoom for that, as you can see the okay. whole class. But you yeah, connect to Zoom good. from Teams. Yeah, that's good. Um, the thing I was talking about was watch together before I had that little brain moment where my mind went off. Mm -hmm. um, and as I say, it's great because it allows you just to watch something together. Um, again, that's quite an old technology, but that was designed more for leisure purposes. 
So it gives you a bit more of a feeling than just running a YouTube video. But I found the YouTube Premiere function really handy uh, for lessons because then they start the lesson together and then they come in with you. So that's been a nice one. Now, and we've talked also, about I just wanted to add to what Julius was saying about the Zoom integration. You mm -hmm. the you can add, there's an add-on to integrate Zoom in, through your Google Calendar as well so that you can automatically set meetings through Google Calendar mm -hmm. um, on Zoom. And I think that's just really nice from like, you know, Microsoft and Google that they want yeah. to be friendly and collaborate uh, with other people to give um, educators and organizations the best possible mm. solution. So I think that's a really nice option to have too. Yeah. I mean, as I say, I think it's it's one where we've had all sorts of interesting things back and forth, and each one has good features, and the others have other features. Oh, um, definitely, yeah. And it's definitely um, it's it's one of you know it's things. like you're comparing Pepsi with Coca Cola right now. So <laughs> yeah, it is. Nikon and Canon. Hey, um, Adriana. Hello, Adriana. Uh, if you if you if you need any tips about the uh, the teams, I can um, you can have a session with me, so I can I can show you all the tips and tricks. Yeah, I think that I think we'd all really appreciate that. Actually, maybe that's something for next week. Uh, yeah. You let know if you're available. That would be a good thing to have a look at because Teams has a lot of difference between some of the other packages and has a lot of functionality there that. Might okay, I can, that, I can, we, we can definitely organize that. And also they have yeah. a live event. So what we're doing now in StreamYard, they can do it mm. on Teams as well. And okay. we're planning to have the graduation, the grade 12 graduation Ooh. next week as a live wow. event on Teams, as well okay. as the assemblies and the end of the school, because we, we, we cannot go to school yet. No, <laughs> we're going to be the same, man. That, that actually yeah. is a really good topic, possibly for next week. Let us know in the comments wow. if you think that's a good topic. How to organize a graduation by remote. Mm. Well, that's I a good okay. idea. I am so excited. I just saw one done in um, Minecraft. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was so cool. Well. I, I was so inspired. I like told my school, and of course, they'd already picked their other plans. You know, we're a few weeks mm. out now, but yeah, I think that'd be a cool topic to discuss and share. Can, can, yeah, can you share that one with us as well? Because I, I'm like, I know some really obsessed people of Minecraft at my school. I would love to share that one with them. They would yeah, love it. sure. I'll Thanks. see if yeah. I can find the link. Yeah. Awesome. Definitely something for next week then. So, um, ways to run your graduation online is, is, is next week's topic. Live events, <laughs> yes. Right definitely, definitely. Pictures and everything, exciting, yes. That is yeah. exciting. Let's go for it. <laughs> let's, let, let's see what we can do. Um, maybe we should even try um, and dress up for the occasion. Can I say as well, like, um, also things like class photos that you take for granted. Mm. So yeah. our school <laughs> has arranged all of the kids and the, the teachers have done bitmojis. Oh, so nice. they're just putting them all together. Oh, that's oh. going to be the class photos. That's an oh, awesome yeah. idea. Yeah. On this one, it's just like we've been right now in what, sixth or seventh week of like online learning. And every now and then, like every three, four weeks, we try to organize something like a talent contest or like, yeah. you know, that Britain mm -hmm. has talent, Singapore has talent, um, Carnival Day. Just to kind of like disconnect them a bit, but still being on on, on online. Mm -hmm. But they need a bit of break. So bring your pet. I I, I saw you, Adriana. I think today yeah. in in a, or like I saw your message in the Apple yes, conference this morning. Yes. Or like you said, like bring your bring your bring your pet to 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 the screen and then yes. uh, have a carnival day. Have like a candid yeah. candid camera. Mm -hmm. um, which one was the other one that I just said earlier? Mm -hmm. um, uh, graduation yeah. picture and stuff and just yeah. like um, wizard or create a theme has that ta uh, have talent singapore has talent yeah. or something like that and they will i i love that bring your pet to zoom it was because so yeah. you know people are doing it anyway i myself yeah. have gone let's just poof a little puppy up here Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as I say, we, we definitely do the tutor group because the kids have got dogs and all sorts coming on, and they love it. I and mean, it just it brings cheer to everybody. Yeah, uh, I have felt for a cuddly panda, or but you know, that's pajamas it. Pajamas day or something like that. Pajamas day, right? And then yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, they we had this in in, in school as well. Pajamas yeah. day. That was basically the first week of distance yeah. learning when they didn't load the rules. <laughs> <laughs> yes, pajama superheroes and yes. 
Yeah. Now everybody will be dressed in nurses and because uh, these are the new superheroes, right? <laughs> yeah. They really are. And, um, and where you were going with that, Julius? Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. You know, that, that inspires a really cool coding project. <laughs> that inspires a really cool coding project, though. You could totally throw that out to your seniors, James, and say who can code the best virtual background, right? Instead of like, mm -hmm. what can we wear or bring? What can we create to make the learning environment better? That could be mm -hmm. cool. And I think, um, actually, I think the kids would really enjoy doing something like Minecraft because it is quite programmable these days. I know some. I like love that idea. I love that idea so much with the graduation on, on, on uh, and, and, Minecraft. And it's not just for kids. Cambridge University apparently remade the whole university, but I managed to get on the server. Wow. Yeah, they announced that today, completely online next year. Yeah, but they, wow. I say they made the whole university in Minecraft. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah. I, I saw that in my email the other day. It was quite fascinating. So, but I, I think I think Cambridge is right to make a call now because then they yeah. can plan for decent learning. I think some of the other universities are probably thinking it, but not quite done it. Mm -hmm. I think Cambridge has enough brand value that they can afford to do it, and they they'll do a decent job. They've got the equipment, and they've had the equipment for a long time, at least seven or eight years. So. Um, yeah, they're more than capable of doing it. And I think making that decision probably takes the weight off a lot of people's minds, whereas other universities will be, eh. I know the University of California said the first semester, definitely not. Um, so I think, I, I just, know. I just think it's so important that they're having those conversations, that yeah. they have some options available, even if there's not a decision on which one we're definitely going to roll with, like have all the options on the back burner. Like I'm, yeah. I've, got four serious options on the back burner right now going into mm. next year uh, that I can continue to develop over the mm. next few weeks to present to the school. I want them to be ready because we just don't know mm -hmm. what's coming, right? Really. Sure. My, hus yeah. my husband said to me just we yesterday, he said, come back and forth quite a few times between now and the end of this crisis. You know, yes, I, I think, I think it will. Getting... Both ways. And Sorry, Gior Georgina, can you, can you finish your idea? I was very curious what you were saying. Just about having four different ideas. So like, what if we end up starting in school, but we only have half the participation because some students have already traveled to return that's to right. their other countries. Totally. What or if their the, there are keep people, them. that's it here, but yeah. the parents don't want to return them. Then we have a complete closure where we're still locked down. So I have four different mm. things ready to go. But I really think, I really think that there are some schools, um, that I know of right now in America that are on hybrid models and I'm mm. really leaning towards this model, like a couple mornings a week and the rest is virtual. And didn't, mm. I think my husband said to me just yesterday that New Zealand have already decided on a four day work week or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Don't quote me uh, on it, but he told me. She's, he she's that. suggested it as a good idea. Um, Singapore just it. implement. Yeah. Singapore mm. has okay. implemented in the local schools in Singapore. They implemented uh -huh. this one like four day and one day online for the next year as well. Wow. Okay. And but the next year starts. Okay. Um, uh, no, it's Pretty already soon. next year. Because they have a diff I don't know. Anyway, but, but they, 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 they run December to December, same as Australia. Yes, correct, correct, correct. So they're like in the middle of semester right now, in the middle oh, of the yeah. year. Wow. Uh, but they, they, they want one day a week to be like online, which is very good because they 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 um, they don't want to lose this momentum, which mm -hmm. they consider that some students actually the feedback from some students is like so valuable that they mm -hmm. realize that they can learn at their own pace and then it's actually preparing them for any kind of next mm -hmm. pandemics or whatever can happen. And as they invested so much in the online learning, they don't want to lose the momentum. So they want to carry with this. And once a week, one, sorry, not once a week, one day a month should be like online learning if okay. the situation uh, should good, go good. to normal. The other thing I've noticed is that um, there are students who are absolutely thriving. And I was on an Apple conference along with most of you, actually, I think. Um, and <laughs> one of the, the nice things that they said was that one of the good things is that you actually can't see the other students, so you can learn at your own pace, potentially. So you're not being pushed by other students and think, I'm not good because that student's far ahead of me, because you don't know where the other students are at. And that's actually been good for a lot of the students in a lot of ways. 
Yeah, it makes sense. That's it. This whole idea just to come together, you know, one office hour a week for to get support and get help from each other. You could even have your digital leaders or your your mm-hmm. your curriculum leader students there to help. And then another hour office hour in the week for students to share and present and collaborate. I love it. I, and as I say, I think it would enable um, the numbers to be distance learned and so on and reduce mm-hmm. risk. Um, right. We are going to do a roundup. Julia, did you want to say something? Sorry. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, probably even the word coaching, like the word coach, means you coach someone not as a class, then you'll be a teacher. So if if the whole situation changes right now, you can coach one on one, or you can become. Uh, uh, okay, actually, let me start with something else. You know what I'm doing right now? I'm checking jobs, not because I don't have a job, but I want to see like what's the descriptions, <laughs> what happens in the all over the world. And you know, loads of schools look for like our position, kind of like technology integrator, specialist, ed tech coach, and so on. And they want the emphasis is the emphasis to be more on coaching students and teachers as well. And mm-hmm. This won't happen in the class. This will happen either in a in a small group or like online. Or this this is a beginning of the new situations right now. Yeah, and I, I can because as you say, if you're coaching in those smaller numbers, distance that kind of distance social distancing becomes much more possible. Definitely, you know, definitely the standard classroom. But obviously, if you're doing that, you're going to have to do that for a lot less hours because you need to talk to various students and so on. Correct. I correct. think. We're going to have a very interesting year ahead uh, and we're going to see what's going on. And uh, the important thing is that we stay together, we help each other and uh, we help the audience as well. And the audience, we love you. And we're going to participate. <laughs> so final roundup, uh, Adriana, best thing about your setup? Um... The best thing about my setup is that it's at home and I'm surrounded by six dogs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's right, the best, best part of it. Yeah. Can't do that at school. Can't do that yeah. at school. The best <laughs> thing about your setup. <laughs> Who, who's that? Gary. Oh, me. Uh, sorry. Uh, best <laughs> thing about my setup is having my wife with me during class. So when she teaches, I am his. I'm. Uh, I'm the assistant. When I teach, she's my assistant. So I also, I'm taking down notes of the things that she encountered, so I can share it with other teachers. So we're both teachers. That's why this this experience is a learning one, a new learning experience for everyone. So best thing of my best thing in my setup is having my wife beside me. Nice, Eric. Well, um, I've been thinking about how there was a study I saw that that said that um, if you had to choose between sound or video, mm-hmm. um, that that in the end actually sound wins. Um, like if you you can understand more based on the sound, you can uh, you can um, yeah. So th- so that's overall that's the best thing. We've talked about how audio wise, there's a tremendous amount of equipment that's good enough, and that's all you need. Mm-hmm. That's all you need is good mm-hmm. enough. But if you have a sound problem, if your sound isn't clear enough and like record yourself d- during class to see, uh, or maybe, I don't know, tell you if somebody else records you during class to see what mm-hmm. it sounds like on the other end, um, that's the highest leverage thing you can do in terms of your setup, in my opinion, uh, is to get to good enough. That's all you need is good enough. And there's a heck of a lot of stuff that'll get you there. Um, so the best thing about my setup is my mic. But again, I, I invest in it because I'm doing more of this stuff. It's not just class. I don't take this to school when I when I teach at school, which I do often. But um, yeah, good enough. Aim for that. And if you're any less than that, invest a little bit and you'll get there. Mm. Excellent. Yeah. Georgina? Uh, my takeaway is personalize your setup. So I remember doing an ergo lesson with my students saying, like, let's pimp my space at the very beginning of distance learning. And I think it's just so important to personalize and make it your own, whether it's get some, you know, candles, obviously not for younger children or some plants next to you and work on those settings for your computer screen. If you're on it a lot with your lights, like I played with my contrast and my brightness and the color modes of my laptop to make sure that the settings were good. So make sure that the space is yours and it's good ergonomically for um for your workspace yeah mm-hmm. cool. Very true. Uh, julius 
my bed sheet <laughs> <laughs> because it's blue and i just realized one day hey i can make a blue screen out of that nice. so that's oh, very nice. <laughs> uh, yeah. and i can i hang it and then basically i'm taking videos right now sweet that's personalized uh, that's <laughs> uh, for me to be honest i i'm going to follow up from what georgina said is that i had most equipment lying around the house really happy with it one thing i've realized is my age and i've had to enlarge the desktops mm -hmm. so that i'm at 125 percent just to make it more comfortable to read everything mm -hmm. um and as i say that's that's my big takeaway is make your screen bigger you don't want to get tired reading text thank yes. you very much it's been a great Thursday, PD, and uh, here's to Thursday, Thursday, as usual. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.